We're here in Berlin at the Track Cycling World Championships and there's some pretty cool bikes, including the world's most expensive track bike. Let's go check it out. First up, we've got our hands on six times Olympic gold medalist Jason Kenny's bike. Now, I was actually lucky enough to ride one of these bikes when I was on the GB track team and they really are lovely bikes to ride. These T5s were built after the Rio Olympics as a new improved version. The carbon frame is a size large and that's a 57 centimeter top tube with a custom paint job by Silverstone Paint Technologies. Now, I'm a very big fan of the paint details on this bike, especially the flag detail on the top. He's running Dura Ace 165 cranks with a Yobi chain ring and a Euro Asia sprocket on the back with a nice Reynolds chain. For the World Championships, the British cycling team is running Campagnolo Ghibli wheels with the Vittoria Pista Speed tyres. Now, these wheels are very popular here at the Trunk Cycling World Championships and they are on nearly every bike I see. Then we have the Cervelo seat post with the Team GB custom saddle cradle. Jason has also chosen a Physique Antara saddle with the Shimano Durace pedals. There are a few cool custom bits on this bike as well, including custom built Jason Kenny size bars and a 3D printed stem. You won't be able to buy these bars anywhere because these are built just for Jason Kenny. Oh, and there's a gold titanium bolt on there too. At the end of the day, he is six times Olympic gold medalist, so he probably deserves that gold titanium bolt. Now this bike comes in at a weight of 6.7 kilograms. Now, there's been a lot of talk about this bike, mostly because it's probably one of the world's most expensive bikes. The frame alone costs £25,000, and once you've added everything else you need, you can expect the price of the bike to be around £60,000. The bike has been built specifically for sprint events on the track, and it has some pretty awesome tech on it. Let's go take a closer look. This is the Malaysian track cycling team bike. It's the WXR Vortec 1 edition, with the frame only coming in two sizes, a small and a medium. The small frame has a reach of 396 millimeters, with a medium coming in at 474 millimeters. So if you'd usually ride a large frame, this probably isn't the bike for you. As you can see, this is a really slick looking bike and the rear seat stays come out slightly, similar to on the Hope Lotus bike. This bike also has a really special paint job and is actually painted by the same people who paint the Red Bull F1 cars. The team is running brute carbon chainrings and the bike has the ability to take a 68th tooth chainring. Now that's pretty big. It's also linked up with an Izumi eighth of an inch track chain. Wheels now, and on the rear they're running a Campagnola Ghibli, and on the front a Vortec 4 spoke. It's super narrow to fit a narrow front through axle. Both the wheels are fitted with Victoria Speed tyres. Again, another really popular choice here at the Track Cycling World Championships. Onto the bars now, and these are really nice slick looking bars, with a bar width of 30 centimetres, and a really short grip length is said to put the rider's hands in the ultimate aerodynamic position. Oh, and these bars come in at a price of £10,000. This bike is finished off with a specialised saddle, Shimano Duris pedals and an SRM power crank. All in, this pure breed race machine comes in at a weight of 7.5 kilograms, all kitted up. Now personally, I think £60,000 is a lot for a track bike, but let's go see what some of the spectators here at the Track Cycling World Championships think. How much would you pay for a track bike? Um, probably about £15,000. Okay. What about £60,000? Um, my cycling's not good enough for that. <laughs> How much would you pay for a track bike? Oh, like a thousand. Okay. Thousand. Because I don't have so much money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well the Malaysian track bike is £60,000. Wow. That's would you pay that much? No. Okay. Would, you, would you pay that much? No, never. <laughs> that, that's a lot. £60,000. Oh my God. That's quite a lot. Yeah. Would you pay that much? <laughs> How much would you pay for a track bike? Very little. Probably 20000 That's quite, still quite a lot. What about 60000 Ah, uh, not with my standard of cycling, no. <laughs> Definitely one of the hottest and undoubtedly the fastest bike here at the Track Cycling World Championships is Philippe Ogana's world-breaking track bike. 
fresh from breaking the men's 4K individual pursuit, here is the Penarello Bolide, the same frame that Wiggins broke his world hour record on. The bars are custom made by Pinarello, and as you can see for these strange looking things at the top of the handlebars, these are 3D printed handholds made for Ganna's hands to get him in the most aerodynamic position as possible. Wiggins also had similar custom handles to these on his hour record bike. The chainring is a brute carbon chainring from the Aero Coach, and interestingly he has a road SRM power crank with a waxed eighth of an inch chain. Like many on the track, he is using the Campagnolo Ghibli wheels, handmade in Italy. The front wheel has a narrow axle for all those aero gains. And the Italian team are using the Vittoria Pista Speed tyres. It's finished off with a physique saddle and some nice custom touches on the seat post. Top Ganner. Nice. I also managed to speak to Sir Chris Hoy himself about some of the bike tech here at the World Championships. Okay, so there's a lot of new tech here at the Track World Championships. What do you make of it and what's, what do you think is the most interesting thing here that you've seen so far? There is a lot of new tech and it's what's hard is to know whether this is as good as it's going to get. A lot of teams are holding back the equipment before the Olympic Games. They don't want to show their hand um, too much. They have to ride the bikes before the Olympics. They can't just turn up on a new bike at the Games. So each team will sort of slip a little, a new bit of clothing or a new bit of tech in. Um, the UCI will check it's okay and then they'll remove it again. So the GB team have used their Olympic skin suits and um, they have used the new GB bike, the, the Lotus Hope bike, I think in Glasgow at the World Cup. So yeah, there's all sorts of exciting new things and often it's not the most radical looking ones that are the, the most exciting or the most um, impressive. So yeah, it's, it's stuff kind of under the, you know, underneath the layers of paint and underneath the layers of carbon, it's, that's what makes it special because it's, it's about how stiff and how um, efficient and how aero the bikes are. And it's interesting that GB aren't using their best bikes here, they're not using the Olympic bikes. What, why do you think that is? Well, traditionally, the, G the GB team have been, have always kept everything to the last minute. So, you know, we used, I mean, we used to race on skin suits that were, you could buy for 60 or 70 quid in a, a local bike shop. Um, they, they have become, their regular skin suits have become better since then. But it's, it's to give you that psychological boost as well as an actual boost. I mean, the, the tech is important, the bikes are important, obviously, but it's not everything. It's not Formula One. You know, at the heart of it is a cyclist who produces the power, and that's what you want to see. You want to see the athletes being the difference, not not the wheels or the bike or the helmet or the skin suit. But at the same time, it's exciting. And as a you know, as a tech fan, um, I do I do enjoy seeing what teams come up with, the way they approach the same puzzle from different angles. You have quite a, a few constraints that the UCI put in place about what you can and can't do with the bikes. Um, so yeah, it's not easy to come up with a new idea. But yeah, some of the teams, the, the bikes are, seem to be performing well. And each, obviously each event has different requirements too. So do you go for one bike, a generic bike that works for hopefully for all events? Or do you have like, like um, Azizul Awang from Malaysia, one bike for him that I believe has cost $60,000 or £6,000 um, to produce. It's a lot of money for a bike, but... It is a lot of money, but would you pay that much for a bike? Out of your own money? I think I would try and get sponsorship for it. I think if it, if you genuinely believe that it's going to make the difference, um, and whether or not, I, you know, he's certainly he's going as well as we've ever seen. He did a 9.5 in the 200 meter time trial, which is a phenomenal time for him. Um, he qualified top 10. He got a bronze medal in the Kieran. Um, so it's it's whether or not it actually makes a difference psychologically. If he goes to the start line believing that he's on, you know, the same equipment or better than anybody else out there, that's got to give you a boost of confidence. So that was pretty cool getting to check out some of the world's best track bikes. I hope you enjoyed this video and please let us know what you thought in the comment section below.